Good morning. I am Andrew Rozak. I'm with the Emergency Care Coordination Center here at HHS Asper. A little over a month ago, the United States was consumed by H1N1. The media was consumed, the public was consumed, and many resources at hospitals were also consumed as people flocked to hospitals to see if they had H1N1 or sought reassurance. Uh, fortunately, the uh, H1N1 has died down a little bit and it wasn't as, uh, as bad as we initially thought. However, the predictions that are out there, and I'm sure we're all familiar with them, are, uh, are quite, uh, quite scary. Many people are predicting a return to 1918 or 1968 levels come this fall. Uh, based on the literature and the research that is out there, and it does vary dramatically, but uh, that could range from anywhere from 2 million to 50 million deaths worldwide. We are taking advantage of the lull. Uh, during the summertime to prepare for the fall just in case H1N1 does make a resurgence and I'd like to highlight six programs that we're currently working on. The first program you heard a little bit about this morning it's the hospital preparedness program and we are looking to get uh, information from current grant recipients based on their experience over the past month or so with H1N1 and hopes to identify best practices and lessons learned. Now we're also hoping to glean uh, areas where opportunity uh, exists for improvement and other gaps in the uh, in the delivery system. Uh, the UPMC project is still currently under development. It's the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Uh, this will seek to gather and combine currently existing information data streams related to healthcare functionality to uh, be utilized by decision makers at state, local, and the federal levels. And feel free to contact the, uh, the points of contact listed on the slide for any information or additional information on any of these programs. Uh, the third program is the allocation of scarce resources and guidance, and that's pretty much exactly what the title says it is. And the pediatric response guidance is also pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the, the American College of Emergency Physicians uh, are working with this in a collaborative effort to de determine and develop best practices for emergency department management and we'll deal with uh, uh, several different areas. One of the areas is emergency department patient flow, uh, emergency department management overall, how to deal with a sudden influx of a lot of patients, surge capacity type issues, and also encompasses a public outreach uh, portion. And the public outreach will be uh, developed to deal with healthcare providers and also for the general public, addressing issues of what is H1N1, when should you go to the emergency department, uh, when do you not need to go to the emergency department, uh, stuff of that nature. The final project is the uh, NDMS Critical Care Equipment and Supply Chain Guidance. Uh, this utilizes modeling that is currently available to develop an inventory of the type and amount of equipment that's needed to care for critically ill patients during an H1N1 outbreak. Uh, the project will be utilized to determine current resource capability and identify key vulnerabilities in the equipments and supply chains. Uh, basically what they're doing with this project is they're modeling to determine what percentage of the population may get uh, H1N1 and out of that population what percent will actually require critical care. And then they're really drilling down into the, uh, the nitty-gritty levels and determining how many syringes, how much IV tubing, stuff like that will be needed to support these critically care patients. So that's our overview of uh, H1N1. Uh, please feel free to contact any of the point of contacts if you like additional information. Thank you for your time.